Hello and welcome to my channel, Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is March the 9th, 2023. And for those of you that are new and just finding me, I hope you enjoy what you see here and that you come back. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that little bell so that you get all my notifications. Generally, I only do one video a week, so you won't be flooded with videos. For those of you that are returning subscribers, and I really appreciate that you do subscribe and return every week, welcome to you as well. And to all of you, please leave me a thumbs up and comments, particularly comments. I really, really enjoy getting your comments and I do respond to them all. Another thing that's very important in YouTube world is that you watch the video right to the end. And I try to give you good and interesting content all the way through the video. So I really appreciate if you can watch the entire thing. Now, I am um, neglected, partly because I had forgotten last week, to mention to you that March is National Crochet Month. So we should be celebrating crochet here in a crochet channel. There is also an International Crochet Day in September, and I'll mention that when it comes, but this is national. I don't know which country, I'm assuming probably in the U.S., but this is National Crochet Month, and we're going to celebrate it. And the reason that I remembered that um, is because I was watching Linan the other day from Nina's Knots Crochet, and I will link the particular video I'm talking about. I will link it down below. And she was talking about, and this is so true, <coughs> she was talking about those of us that crochet and knit and do other um, handcrafts. I know I did the same when I cross-stitch. We're always busy making things for other people, <coughs> whether it be family or friends or a lot of us crochet and knit and put them in donations to various organizations. And we're so busy <coughs> doing so much for others that sometimes we tend to forget about ourselves. So she decided to start a hashtag that is hashtag crochet for me 2023. And that's why I'm going to link you to her video. I'm not too sure if she's collecting pictures herself or she just started the hashtag and it's on Instagram so you can go and put something there. But um, it's so true that I'm so busy making things either to sell at a craft show or to donate that I don't too often make things for myself. I've made myself a few of these scarves, not this one, but a few of them. Um, but I haven't made myself a lot of items. So I decided that I'm going to join in on your hashtag, Lynette. And not only am I going to make, and I'll tell you a few things I plan to make, not only am I going to make some things this month, I'm going to spread it into April. Other than the fact that I have one whip to make for a cow I'm in, and of course I have to make my own cows for this month and next month, the rest of the time I have nothing that is, is needing to be done. So I've decided, and there's a reason why I'm spreading it into April, I'll tell you in a minute. I've decided I'm going to make some items for myself using some of my beautiful hand-dyed yarns. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I plan to make for myself. So the first thing is I'm going to make, and I'm going to put the picture up here, 
I'm going to make this um, cowl infinity scarf from EFA and it's called, sorry, I have the picture here, do I? No, I'm putting the picture up here. And it's called the unencumbered, unencumbered uh, cowl or shawl. I'm not sure which. Uh, I fully intend to make that. And I think I had one yarn picked out and then I changed my mind. I think I am going to use these yarns, these three, since they use a gradient. I forget what they use, maybe um, Luster. I'm not sure if they use their Luster Sport or not, but it's not a yarn I care for. I'm going to use these three. To me, they work together. They're just three yarns. They weren't a package that I picked out and they are Alpaca Silk DK. And I love their alpaca silk DK, and it's not an overly heavy DK. It's slightly heavier than most of my fingering, of course, but not as heavy as my DK Sparkle, for example. Um, and it's just so luxurious. Alpaca, it has alpaca. Maybe I'll pack a 50% and mulberry silk 50%. And it's just heavenly to feel. And I thought, won't that make a nice cowl around my neck? And I'm going to make it a little bit longer, not a short one, since I have three skeins here. And I think each skein has, each skein has 230 yards. So I have a decent amount. And I'm going to make it long enough that I can twist it and put it around my neck twice if I like. So that's for sure one thing I'm going to make. Probably the first thing I'm going to make. Then, I, uh, and this is the reason why I have to go into April. I'm going to make myself a sweater. I'm going to talk more about sweaters in a bit, but I'm going to make myself a sweater, this sweater, again from EFA. It's a very basic sweater. You can see up close there, the ribbing. And um, this is a bottom-up sweater. Pretty sure. Anyhow, it looked very straightforward, and as soon as they showed it, I wanted to make it. But it's made in Dewey DK. I don't have enough Dewey DK in one color to make it. And in fact, I probably don't have enough in anything that way to make it. So I looked through their Dewey DK, and I saw a color I loved, and they didn't have enough. They only had one or two skeins, and I wrote them, and I said, this is how good their customer service is. I get a response the same day or the next day. And I wrote, and I said, uh, I really want to make that new sweater you just released. It was a free pattern. It might still be. And um, I don't have enough Dewey DK to make it, but the Dewey DK I want to use is, I think it's called uh, Gladiola, blue, no, blue hydrangeas. I said, and you don't have enough to make a sweater. Is it possible you'll be dying more? And she wrote back and said, she told Shandy, Shandy put it on the dye list. They listed it. She says, you buy just as much as you want. And I did buy enough, but it's a pre-order which means it won't get dyed until later this month. I think, um, I think if I recall correctly, around the 17th. So you know if they ship it soon after, maybe around the 20th, I'm not going to get it until April. But I really do want to make that sweater. It is a warmer sweater with its DK weight. And so my plan is to make it when it gets here which is going to be April. So that's why I'm going to work March and April making items because I have several items I want to make. Another item I would like to make <clears throat> um, 
and I haven't quite decided which one, but I'm going to make a bias scarf. And I'll show you some of my considerations. Here's one of the patterns I think I might consider. Either this pattern or another one that's a little more filled in. But I definitely want to make myself a bias scarf. And I'm thinking that I want to make it in this kit. Now, this is a kit from EFA, and this is Cash Silk Sock. And these are the three that come together. There is another one, and it's called uh, Bias Loop. That might be the one I make. It's solid, has a little bit of open work, and they've joined it to make an infinity scarf. I'm just going to make it a long scarf, not join it. And these are the three colors that go together, and it's called the um, Bouquet Hues. But I'll be quite honest with you and tell you that I'm not terribly keen on this one. A little more orange in, not that I'm against orange, but a little more orange in it than I would enjoy. I thought I would just focus on these two. Because if I make the other one I'm thinking of, two, in fact, one would be enough, but... Uh, I think I might do these two together and save this and make a one skein item that I can put up for sale. But I think this is what I'm going to use. Cash silk sock is 50% cashmere and 50% silk. Cash silk sock. So those are for sure the two items I want to make right off the bat. Um, neither one of them will take a long time. And um, then I'm going to make that sweater in April. Um, and I have another sweater I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. So those are some items I'm going to make for myself. Now, before I go on with uh, the business of this week... Um, I need to make an apology. Last week you saw that wonderful slideshow and I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate all of you sending me your beautiful items. You just, you know, some of them are works of art and I was really pleased. But I got kind of messed up and I made a mistake in the middle and I had to cut and piece. I don't know if you could tell that I went away and came back. And I missed mentioning somebody and then I came back and I, I did mention that person. But in cutting and pasting it all, I totally forgot to show the actual picture of the item she made. At the very last person was Carrie, who lives here in Ontario, who made a shawl. And I'm going to put the picture of her shawl up here. You probably thought, what's going on, Judy? Um, and that something had happened to the video. is my mistake. I did not include the picture of her shawl. I don't remember what shawl pattern it is, but I do remember that she used um, Red Heart Roll with it, I believe. So, so sorry, Carrie, that I missed putting up a picture of your item. I hope you will go into Ravelry. And that's one other thing I want to mention to everybody. I did open up the Ravelry page, as I mentioned last week. I started a group. And some of you have been placing pictures in it. So if you haven't done it, please go and get yourself a Ravelry account. And you have to create... To make it work properly, you have to create a project page with your project. You don't have to put a lot of information, just name of name of it and a picture of it. And then you can go into the group and include your picture of your item. So it's time that all of you can put in your January or your February items um, for everybody to see. And I do appreciate those that have put theirs in, and I hope 
the rest of you go and, and have a look and, and, and add your pictures. Okay, now I want to talk about FOs. I, this is an FO I'll talk about later, but it's not a current FO. I actually completed two items this week. One of them was my March Cal item with that really bright yellow, orange, and green. I completed it yesterday, as a matter of fact. I won't show it yet until towards the end of the month. Um, and remember, I had another skein of mixed orange and white. It's sort of like creamsicle, isn't it? And I am going to make something with this before the month is up. I'm not sure what, but I can tell you right now, it's likely going to be a C.J. Brady one skein um, project. So I still have this yet to do for the month. I'll put that aside. So the other F.O. I finished, I showed you it as a work in progress last week. And that is a whip because I'm in a cow where I have to finish whips. And I finished, that's the back of it. You can see the seam. I finished this sweater. Now, I'll, I'll flash while I'm talking. I'll flash a couple of pictures up here, one laying on the floor, and one, maybe I'll just put the one on the mannequin. Yeah, I'll just put the one picture of it on the mannequin, and here it is. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm not happy with it. Um, it's a fair bit of work to not be happy with it, and part of the reason is it is so darn heavy. This is made with Lion Brand Pima Cotton. And when you feel it, you don't think it's all that heavy. But when you work it up, it is heavy. And it wasn't made quite correctly. I went too far down before I joined under the arms. So that made it too big in the sleeves and I had to decrease. So you see how big it is and then I decrease. And it also made it too big in the body, and I had to do some decreasing there. Now, the body part isn't bad, but the sleeves look kind of weird. So I should have joined a little farther back, and I should not have increased as much as I did in the yoke. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I definitely have it as a template for the next time I make one. But... What it made me realize is this. I have two other colors of Pima cotton, colors that I would wear with items that I have, and I realize I do not want just a regular top, an indoor top. These are too heavy. And I have enough to make that size and I have enough of this to make a huge sweater so this is what I have decided if you go online you will see um, on YouTube you will see a few people that have made hexagonal cardigans and in fact one person made the hexagonal cardigan and seamed it front and back to make a pullover now I've already told you these are too heavy for a pullover. But I do like a nice heavy cardigan in the spring and fall to put on on a chilly day when I'm, say, going to the grocery store or going to my class. It's, you know, not cold enough to put your winter coat on, but it's not warm enough to go without a coat or to put on your real lightweight summer type jacket. I need something. I don't have a jacket or a coat or whatever that's sort of that in-between. So I'm going to take the two of these and I'm going to put them together and make two hexagons. And I'm going to make them alternate. I'm going to start with this color and use this color with it. And I'm on the other side, I'm going to start with this color and use... Or I have one ball of navy. I might start both of them with navy in the center. No, I'm, I think I want to keep the navy to be trim around. 
the whole thing and maybe even seam up the back. I don't know. But I'm going to use these two. I have like seven of these and ten of these. I have more than enough to make a cardigan, a hexagonal cardigan. And so I'm going to start that probably towards the end of March and finish it up in April. So I'll have it to wear in the appropriate weather in April. So that's one other thing I'm going to make for me. And I will add all of these items to the hashtag, um, the hashtag crochet for me 2023. So thanks for that idea, Lynette. I am definitely going to do something. Okay, the next thing I want to uh, talk about here is, let's get this yarn out of the way. All right, so I, um, I told you I'd be talking about EFA yarn, pearlescent fingering and pearlescent worsted. <clears throat> if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, you know, once every month or two months or six weeks, I want to do a thorough review of an EFA yarn that was suggested to me <clears throat> since I have so much of it and I do use it. Now, one of the yarns I've used the most is the Pearl Lesson Fingering. Now, if you recall, this is one of the items I made for the February cow violets and it does look like the colors in that violet yarn so here is one item made out of pearlescent fingering now i'm going and this is also an item made out of pearlescent fingering and um i don't remember the name of this pattern but this is definitely oh i know yes yes i do remember this is called Oops, we're caught. This is called Sea of Tranquility, and I did not make it full size. It's a C.J. Brady pattern. And this is also a C.J. Brady pattern. And this one, I believe, is called Vintage, Vintage Roses. And I love this one because look at, look at the edging on it. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's quite long. And uh, if I made it again, I might make it a little shorter. But I really, really do like the edging on it. Um, I'm going to put it back on. And now I'm going to move this for a second. This is another. This is an asymmetrical triangle you see the wide end over here it starts at a point and again it's a cj brady pattern i oops i can't remember what name all i'm going to do today is link cj brady in ravelry so you can look at her patterns but she's also in etsy and finally these were all um pearlescent fingering. But finally, I have one more over here, this cowl. And this is a pearlescent worsted. And I have done another worsted one in purple. Um, was it a scarf or a cowl? I think it was a scarf, but I can't find it. It's in my stash somewhere. So let's talk about pearlescent fingering and pearlescent worsted. Now, first of all, you can tell how much I like pearlescent fingering because if you look down here, this entire bin right here is all pearlescent fingering. Plain colors and variegated colors. Then there is another bin down below that is about half full of pearlescent worsted. I have them separated. Well, you can see the pearlescent fingering is full. No room for any more in that bin. Um, but I have slowed down in buying pearlescent fingering. I know I have more than I can use right now. So let's get us back in sync here. So I have here, 
This is the yarn I used for this scarf. Um, I still have another skein of it. So I have about a skein and a half. So quite sufficient to make something sizable. I might make an asymmetrical triangle out of it. But what I have here for you to see is a skein. I got a plain colored one. And there's the pearlescent fingering. And here is the pearlescent worsted. So you can see the difference, obviously, fingering versus worsted. Now, I want to tell you about it and my thoughts on it. First of all, both of them are, as you can see, a single ply roving type yarn. Now, even though it's roving, there is not a lot of variation in thin to thick. There might be a little, but not much, but it is single ply. Both of them have 50% merino and 50% mulberry silk and both of them feel heavenly silky they feel very very silky and you can really feel the silk in it now the fingering has 550 yards 500 meters 550 yards the worsted hmm Need another one. I don't know where the tag is to this one. I don't know. The worsted has 201 meters, 220 yards. There's another. Isn't that scrumptious? They have so many. This one is called December Holly. Hmm. They have so many gorgeous, gorgeous colors in them. Um... And that's why I have so many. Now, mind you, when I first started using um, EFA's yarn, the pearlescent was the one I knew the best. I hadn't tried a lot of the others, so I was buying mostly that yarn. Then I tried some others, but I still kind of stayed with the pearlescent. But now I have... Um, this is coming apart. Need to fix it before it goes any further. <laughs> I have come to start knowing and enjoying some of their other yarns. So let me tell you. First of all, I do love working with this. It can split a little bit. I wouldn't say it's terrible with splitting, but it, it can sometimes. Now, I don't know if you can see but it has a halo on it. I think you can see that. And you can see it there. See the halo? There's a little bit of a halo. So a negative of this yarn is it tends to cling to itself. So for instance, when you put this on a Swift and you're making a ball, it is sticking to itself a little bit. So when you pull the center out, it tends to pull it out in clumps. Um, it's not terrible, and it depends on the, the ball winder you have. There are some that never give me trouble, but when I was working with this one, it was coming out in clumps like yarn barf every so often, which would get maddening, just because when you pull it, it tends to pull more with it. It's not doing it now. So um, it is nice to work with. It does feel wonderful. Um, and when you block it, oh, it really blocks. So whatever size you think you made, it'll be much bigger when you block it, especially if you made a full skein. I didn't even use half, about half a skein, and I got... I, I quit before it was big enough because I knew that I would block it out, which means 
when you have lace in it, especially like the lace in this, it blocks out so nice that you can see your lace in it. So there are pros and cons. Some people might find it a little aggravating how it pulls out of the yarn ball. Um, but generally speaking, <coughs> I, I really enjoy this yarn. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say about it. Oh, the other thing is price-wise. If you look at the price of the yarns on EFA, this one is middle of the road. Both of them, the fingering and the worsted, are uh, $30 a skein. Now, this skein has 550 yards, whereas some of their other skeins that are $30 are like 40, 400 meters, 437 yards, okay? Now, some of the yarns are a little less, but some of them are more. 32, 34, 35, 37. Oasis fingering is 37 a skein. So this is middle of the road price-wise. Um, definitely one of the best feeling. So I would probably rate it about a four to four and a half. The thing that keeps me from making it a four and a half, like the Mirage that I did last month, is the fact that it clings and it comes out of the cake in clumps. So you have to be unwinding. Other than that, I love this yarn. So that's what we have to say about pearlescent. Now, uh, I want to go back to talking about this pearlescent. And this is going to lead me into the next section of my video. Um, I mentioned that I am going to be doing some de-stashing. I want to do major de-stashing, but I know me. I have a hard time parting with things. But I want to de-stash yarn, which I will do into this later in the spring. And I also want to de-stash items in my stash of finished items. And... I do not have an Etsy store, and for all that I hear about Etsy, I don't think I want an Etsy store. I think some of their policy, I used to um, deal on eBay, and I did a lot of selling on eBay, and their policies kept changing, particularly the policies about shipping and their policies about how much percentage they took, and I'm hearing Etsy is the same thing. They want to take a commission off of the shipping price, so I hear. But anyway, it takes a lot of work to set up an Etsy store, and I'm just not at that point where I want to do that. But I do want to sell some of my finished objects. And, like, COVID really hurt. We don't have many craft shows, and the few craft shows we have in my area are full of direct sales. They aren't true crafters or artisans. So what I decided to do was de-stash and have a silent auction right here in my video. So what I'm going to do today is show you six. They are all of this, this kind of um, scarf, what I call a fashion scarf. Many of them are C.J. Brady patterns. Um, all the ones I'm going to show you use only one skein, so they aren't super expensive. But I'm not sure what you consider to be a reasonable price. Where you live is different than where I live. So I thought I would do a silent auction, and this is the information you need. You need to email me. I'm going to show you them one at a time with a number. You need to email me telling me the number of the scarf. Now you can describe it if you want as well. You have to do that by Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Monday, I believe that's the 13th. Let me have a quick look here. Monday, the 13th of March, 2023, with your bid. 
please know that I will only add in Canada $5 to ship. And if you're in the U.S., $10 to ship. That does not cover the whole shipping. I'm willing to share the shipping price with you. So you are also un under the, you also understand that you are making a bid in Canadian dollars. So for example, if you're in the US right now, the money exchange is about 40%. I bought something the other day and it was actually just over 40%. <coughs> on my final Canadian bill. Now, it's not 40% going backwards. It's always less. But, for instance, if I bought something that was $100, it would cost me 140 Canadian if it was U.S. Or if it were $50 U.S., I'd be paying another $20, so $70 Canadian. Now, if you say 50 Canadian, it's probably uh, around 40 US, maybe a little less. I, I can't, I don't know the exchange going backwards. If you're over in Europe, I mean, it's even better exchange because I think we pay something like 1.6 or 1.7 Canadian dollars on the Euro. So I'm just telling you that as a frame of reference, your, <coughs> making a bid in Canadian dollars. The highest bid gets the item. If you get to me before <coughs> 6 p.m. Monday, March the 13th, I will get back to you that evening and tell you if you were successful or not, and we'll work out the details on shipping and exchange of money. So these are the items that I am selling. They are all pretty much um, they're they are all pretty much a merino nylon um, hand dyed yarn. So here is number one. I'm just gonna number them and show them to you. It's kind of loose, but this is, this is number one, and it is mostly purples, and it is triangular shaped with scallops on the one side. It is definitely, I'll try to model some of these. It is definitely large enough to make, see, to come around and around the neck. It's not real deep, just enough. So that is number one. Purples, and there's actually kind of a deep blue in there too. Number one. Number two, this is browns and golds. It is Similar, but not exactly the same. It has scallops top and bottom. Again, it is triangular shaped. Quite long, longer than the other one. And um, sometimes I can tell by the material. This one is merino cashmere and silk. So that means it was made with cash silk sock. The other one was... Um, just plain. But this one is merino, cashmere, and, and silk. So that means it was a little more expensive skein of yarn. It does. It does feel very nice. So that is number two. Number two, the browns and golds. <clears throat> number three, Number three, um, merino nylon, still feels nice. And uh, this one, again, is it's a little deeper V than the others, has picos along the edge. And it is your spring, what I consider to be spring Eastery colors. 
And again, it is a B, but a little bit deeper, not quite as long. And that is number three. Purples, pinks, and sort of an aqua. Next one, number four. And this has merino, cashmere, and nylon. Merino, cashmere, nylon. Now, I know this was a yarn I got from Nick Crate. I have another skein of it yet. And it was one of the very first C.J. Brady patterns I ever made. And this one is a little more of, see, it's very long, starts here, scallops, shells along the edge. And it's a little more of the boomerang. So it's longer on this end than it is on this end. Now, the yarn was called, the color was citrus. Uh, orange, lemon, and um, grapefruit were the colors supposedly in it. And you can see that it has a, a goldy color and an orangey color and uh, sort of pinky. So this is number four. And as I, it was called um, Be Like a Sunflower was the pattern. Uh, by C.J. Brady, and again, this is soft because there is some cashmere in it. Number four. Number five, we're back to purples. This one is, uh, I'll just show you the number, number five, and this is just uh, merino, plain merino. And this one is blacks and grays. Not blacks. Purples. Purples and grays. And again, it would be a C.J. Brady. I was making a lot of hers at the time. And this one again, I think, was one of her... You see, we have like the dragon teeth, dragon scales. And again, it's one of her boomerang shapes. Again, more than long enough to be able to wrap it around your neck. See, it's quite long, but not real deep. A little deeper than a couple of them were. So that is purples and grays. And that is number five. And finally, I am going to auction off the one I made for February. This is Pearl Essence Silk, which is a very silky feeling. I don't have a tag on it. But you know that it is merino and silk, number six. And, of course, it is the purples and greens of the violets. So, that comes to the end of the six that I am auctioning off because I have piles and piles of these in my stash. And... I would like somebody um, to enjoy it. I, I can't wear them all. I have some in my own personal stash that I enjoy. But, you know, I can only wear so many. And I would really like them to be in somebody else's household where they would be enjoyed. So that brings us to the end. Like I said, you have until Monday, uh, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to make a bid. My email address is right here, and it is in the description box below. And um, good luck, everybody. I hope they find a home where they will be enjoyed because I don't wear enough. I go out once a week to dance class, and actually my dance class is too warm to wear these. So 
they don't get a lot of wear. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to talk about acquisitions. I know this is a little longer. I had a lot to cover, but that's okay once in a while. So acquisitions. Well, before I show you yarn, <coughs> excuse me a second. <coughs> Before I show you yarn, I want to show you two other little acquisitions I made yesterday. I happened to be mailing a parcel, going through the um, drugstore, and they had their Easter displays out. Aren't they adorable? So I'm going to make loveys out of these. That's something else I'm going to do this month, is make loveys out of these two, and maybe another one. And I'm going to put them up on the marketplace before Easter because I think they'd be a great little gift for a child for Easter. I'll be sure to show you them when I finish them. Maybe if I'm smart, I'll do them in the next week so they are done in time. Aren't they cute? This one is super, super soft like a mi microfiber. Anyway. Okay, so that was my acquisition in the stores yesterday. Now, time for yarn. Well, I have been watching and watching for this, and I'm really excited to talk about it. I received just yesterday, day before, Tuesday. Tuesday, I received my yarn from Crafty Wool. Crafty Wool is in the UK, and is it large enough? You can see the um, email. They are on Etsy, and I will link the shop down below. But there is an added piece of information here. The dyer of this yarn is Adam, and Adam is a follower of my channel. He's been to following my channel for a little while now, and he comments regularly, and he mentions that he dyed yarn. So I went, actually, in January, he submitted an item for the January cow out of yarn he had dyed. So I had to go find his site and see what he had. So this is one of the ones I got. Now this is... The only fingering way. He doesn't have a large selection. And I noticed that fingering weight isn't heavy. He's more into DK. Did you have worsted as well, Adam? I think. But definitely DK. Uh, I think this was only one of one or two that he had in fingering weight. But it, I could, it looked navy to me. It's actually a little bit more teal and very dark black, but colors I really like. Um, so I had to get it being it was in my color spectrum. Now, this is actually BFL yarn. It's called BFL Platinum Sock. So it's 75% superwash BFL and 25% nylon. Now, I've had BFL, I actually didn't like. It was very rough yarn, but I thought with the nylon, it would be um, nicer. And it is. Uh, I'm glad to say it is nicer. Now, not quite as nice, I don't think, as Merino, but it's going to make not scratchy at all. And I, I really do like that color. Um... How many yards? It's probably 400 and 425 meters. So another 40. So 460 yards. I might be able to make an asymmetrical triangle out of it, but I definitely could make some of uh, C.J. Brady's one skein. Or I could put it with a black to make it, uh, or charcoal, to make it longer. I wish I had a skein that was this color to put with it. And you know, I am going to look through my stash and maybe I'll find something close to this color to make it a two skein project. Okay, the other skeins I got were DK. Now I'm not a huge fan of DK. It doesn't go as far, that's why. 
but I do get it now and then. And this is the one that caught my attention because of the colors. Now, this is, again, a BFL, 100% uh, BFL. Hmm. I feel pretty much the same, even though there's nylon in this one. They're pretty close. Uh, anyhow, love the pinks and blacks together. We have a little bit of yellow, but not too much to throw me off. And um, this one, though, I can probably find something, like even if it is black, to put with it. Because one skein of DK isn't going to go too far. But see, there are a lot of candy pop colors. I can maybe match the pink. Definitely the black. Probably some turquoise. I can find a couple other skeins to put with it and make a scarf or something. So quite happy with the way that looks. And finally, the ultimate. I wasn't sure what color this pink would be because it looked dull on the screen, but it isn't. I have a friend out there, Bonnie, you'd love this. I love this. And I think you can see it's sparkle. Now, I'm thinking I might have a black sparkle or a charcoal sparkle. I don't know that the pink I could match. You could never get two exactly the same. I wish I had two skeins of this, but I think he only had one. But I love it. And if it means making, okay, it's DK. Sorry. 75% merino. Oh, this one is merino. Okay. Yeah, it does feel a little bit softer. 75% merino and 20% um, nylon and 5% Stellina. Um, but it is DK. So I won't be able to make anything bigger than maybe a cowl. A cowl out of this. Um, but I really, really like it. And um, if I want to make it bigger, maybe I can come up with a gray to go with it. Uh, but this one, Adam, I love it. Of all of them, this is my favorite. Um, although I love the color of that one too. I mean, they're all nice. They're all lovely. I'm happy with them all. And uh, Adam, I don't think you charged me full shipping. Thank you for that. Um, but I appreciate that he, he, you know, worked with me and tried to get it sent to me the best way he could and kept me, kept me in touch, kept me updated with where it was. So lovely yarn. Um, I wanted to do a second acquisition, but we're so, sort of running out of time here. I think I've spent enough time, so that's fine. We'll get to see them next week. Next week, I don't think I have as much to say, so we'll do one or two acquisitions. And next week, what are we doing next week? Well, next week, I'm going to be talking about whips. And there is another hashtag out there going the rounds of the creators I'm going to talk about. So uh, stay tuned to see the whips I have, which... In my case, I call them UFOs. They aren't something I'm working on. They're something sitting in a project bag and have been sitting there for months, years, who knows. But uh, we're going to discuss whips next week. And hopefully I'll have some finished objects to show you and definitely more yarn acquisitions. So hope to see you back again next week. And until then... Happy hooking.